and they met with the key Zionist organizations, the World Jewish Congress, the American Jewish Committee, the B'nai B'rith Masonic Lodge, the Anti-Defamation League, and they reached some sort of secret agreement. We don't know what it was, but in October 2006, just a couple of weeks later, then-President Kirchner sends public prosecutors Alberto Nisman and Martinez Burgos to, to the United States to meet with CIA and Mossad authorities. Upon their return to Argentina, these two gentlemen, prosecutors Nisman and Martinez Burgos, immediately accuse Iran through their former president, Mohamed Rafsan Hani, and seven of his key government officers of being responsible of having planned and finance the attack against the AMIA through Hezbollah. Local Judge Kanikova Corral, who today is hearing this case, immediately obliged and said, yes, of course, naturally. When that was made public, the political director and secretary general of the World Jewish Council, Rabbi Israel Singer, the same one that sat with Paul Volcker and uh, the president of the Daya, Mr. Ruben Beraja, in this group of eminent persons who were supposed to investigate the Swiss banks, said, Mr. Rabbi Israel Singer at that time, that what the Kirchners were doing was, quote, confirmation that they were honoring the commitment they took up during that secret meeting in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City on 22nd September 2006. What commitment? What did they agree? What was the reason they agree? In exchange for what? All we see today is a full-scale cover-up of the truth by Nestor Kirchner and his government. The consequences for Argentina have been very severe for decades now. We have all but broken off diplomatic relations with Iran. We stopped trading with them for years. We not only insulted the Republic of Iran, but we have also insulted the Muslim world as a whole. And we have aligned ourselves unconditionally with the geopolitical interests and objectives of the United States and the State of Israel in the Middle East. Because you see, the AMIA and the DAYA are part of the global Jewish Zionist power network. For example, the American Jewish Congress describes the AMIA as their international partner as part of this uh, international network. AMIA's mission statement says that one of its key objectives is to, quote, strengthen ties with the State of Israel, foreign power. DAYA's mission statement includes, quote, strengthening ties with Israel and ratifying Israel's condition as the spiritual center of Jewish life. These are not Argentinian organizations. These are organizations working for a foreign power, which is at permanent war, and is now looking for war against Iran, and which is committing genocide against the Palestinians whose territory they stole over 60 years ago. Clearly, AMIA and DAYA are two lobbies in Argentina. They work for Israel, just as APAC, the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee, does in the United States of America. They interfere with foreign policy, and they have the clout to do it, because if the Zionist organizations can change, can turn American foreign policy to favor the state of Israel, don't you think they can do the same thing in Argentina? Local lawyer Juan Gabriel Lavaque is a very well-known local lawyer from the Peronist Party, is the defense attorney for these two gentlemen, Canude Edul, who are permanently being accused of having been involved, although there's not a shred of evidence, with this uh, uh, as the uh, go-betweens for this white traffic van that, not, that is not appearing anywhere. <clears throat> he recently uh, asked the public prosecutor Alberto Nisman, in representation of his client, that the case against his clients, and even the case against Iran, totally dependent, depended sorry, on finding out whether that Renault traffic white van existed or not. Especially since a court-appointed expert, Border Police Officer Osvaldo Laborda, brushed the problem away, because no parts were really found of this white traffic van, brushed it away by officially stating that the remains of the van could not be found because they had been buried by the explosion on that terrible morning in 14th July 1994. Dr. Lavaque therefore asked the prosecutor, Mr. Nisman, to dig four meters down at the place of the explosion, the alleged explosion, so that we could know once and for all whether the van ever existed at all. 
Naturally, Prosecutor Alberto Sisman said, no way. Alberto Nisman, sorry, said, no way. Judge Kanikova Corral, who is here in the case, said, no way. The Kirchners and the local media all looked the other way. And Alberto Nisman, the public prosecutor, had his way. Interesting to note that in 2007, Special uh, Prosecutor Alberto Nisman was invited to attend the annual meeting of the American Jewish Committee. Interesting to note that in 2008, Argentine Prosecutor Alberto Nisman informed, fully informed, the Supreme Court about this case. But not the Supreme Court of Argentina. He went to Tel Aviv, Israel, to inform the Supreme Court of the State of Israel about this case. Clearly, they work for the State of Israel. Just as Argentina is a financial colony of the global banking infrastructure, today we are a political colony of the State of Israel, Zionist organizations, and the United States. But as hunters, good hunters, though, we see all the signs, we see the false flags, we see the planted evidence, we see the media frenzy and permanent lying, as Josef Goebbels, the Nazi, used to say, lie, 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 something will always remain, and the engineered confusion. There is no Iranian connection. There is an Israeli connection. That is the point that has to be seen. This is the same fingerprint like the USS Liberty in June 1967, the Israeli embassy in 1992, the army in 1994, 9-11, the London attacks. Are we hunting the same beast? Do all roads lead to Zion?